I hadn't turned that fish yet. Hey guys, welcome back for another fishing video here on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. Today's video is actually kind of cool. And I'm going to give you a little backstory on why I think what I think about this particular bait. You know, I try not to focus too much on one particular soft plastic or one particular crankbait. But in this case, is this the most versatile worm ever made? Find out more right after this. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. I greatly would appreciate it. And maybe, how about this? How about you drop me a comment below and tell me your favorite worm and maybe what you think your most versatile worm is in your tackle box. All right guys, today I'm gonna talk to you about what I consider the most versatile worm in my tackle box. Many of you could have guessed maybe a Cinco, an Ocho, a trick worm, any type of straight tail finesse worm, but oddly enough, in the case of how I like to fish, it is not even close. Is a, a soft plastic stick bait one of the most versatile? Absolutely. But I would argue that this particular worm and this style of worm would go up against that night and day every day of the week. That particular worm is the cutter worm. The cutter worm is just another bait in a long line of swimming type worms. You know, I, and I told you I'd tell you a funny story and like where I actually started fishing this. You know, we all have that uncle or that cousin or that brother that's taken us fishing and shown us a way to catch a bass. Well, in this case, my uncle, my uncle Bill, he took me out. We fished the McDonald's Big Bass Splash on Sam Rayburn. It was really early on in my career. I mean, way before I was a pro angler or anything like that. And we were fishing a grass line on one of my favorite creeks on the lake in Beach Basin. And he brought out this worm. I'd never seen it before. And it was an ultra vibe speed worm. It was a Zoom ultra vibe speed worm. He pulled this thing out. And if you know those old school worm draggers, you know that the paint would dry on a wall between casts. So they could make a cast and all the paint you just painted on the wall would dry before they got that cast in. He's that slow of a fisherman. He also eats that slow too. Well, that's for another day. But the deal is, is they fish super duper slow. Well, the first time we ever did that and fished that worm was at that event and we caught so many bass. I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous the sheer amount of three to four pound bass that we caught that day. I think we did end up getting one check, which is great. You know, I think we had like a 495 or something like that. It was a great bass. We only caught one of them. But the moral of that story is he introduced me to a bait that as my career went on, became one of these staples in my tackle box. Fast forward a little bit, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my days on Toledo Bend. You know, I was started fishing that Ultra Vibe Speed Worm out deep on ledges and drops, a big Magnum Ultra Vibe Speed Worm, the small one, fishing it on a Texas rig, a Carolina rig, a big jig head. You know, we kind of fished it on everything, especially there in the beginning, and it worked on everything, and the fish absolutely demolished that bait. You know, you could take a stick worm, you could take a soft plastic jerk bait, a 10 inch worm, and they're not as versatile because you can't catch a fish on those baits literally year round. I mean, some could argue you could with a Cinco, but guys, I found plenty of situations where a Cinco doesn't work, where a, a little bit of tail action does make a big difference. You know, if you think about how worms have progressed, you know, the styles of worms. You know, I remember way back in the day when six inch curly tail worms were the bait of choice. Well, I think it's a perfect blend when you start thinking about a swimming worm between a curly tail and basically a, st a soft plastic stick bait because it, it has some action. It's and actually a lot of times a very realistic action going through the water. So that's just a couple of scenarios. 
Fast forward even more, I become a professional fisherman. My first trip to Florida was Lake Okeechobee, one of the biggest big bass factories on the planet. I mean, dude has so many giant bass in it, especially then. That's when they were cracking 20 pounds. And you, if you caught 20 pounds, you didn't even get a check in the tournament. I mean, it was that good. But my buddy and travel partner at the time, Zach Cottle, he was a magician with a magnum speedworm and absolutely could kill him with it. And he actually taught me a lot about swimming that worm through the grass. And I caught so many big bass doing it. I mean, guys, it was absolutely ridiculous. Well, fast forward to about two years ago, Strike King decided they were gonna bring me on staff. And, you know, I'd been using a speed worm pretty much my entire career at this point. And it was gonna take an act of Congress to get it out of my hand, and that's a fact. Well, I got the cutter worm, I got the magnum cutter worm, and guys, like, I don't know if it was just the fact that they don't see it as much or, or something about it, but I can take that magnum cutter worm literally anywhere in this country and basically rig it up on just about any kind of rig, whether it's a shaky head, a Ned rig. I mean, you can even see the Ned cutter worm if you look at it. And that was part of the reason that we even designed that thing is because I wanted that cutter worm action on a Ned rig. So you can basically use that style of worm in all fishing situation. Here's a quick look of a couple fish catches this week on Choke Canyon on how I utilize this worm in a couple of different manners. Yeah, that, oh wow. Let's cut this. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, wow. There we go. Oh wow. I hadn't turned that fish yet. That's a big one. Here we go, Todd Castledown. What you think about that? Oh yeah, it's coming in here. Look at the belly. Woo! Cutter worm. My my baby cutter worm. I love it. Oh, oh there she is. Not bad. I did too. Oh yeah, that's definitely the same one. I'll be working on a bag today. Who's fishing this? Oh, it's mine. It's my fish. Yours ain't even hooked. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. My trick stick's on him. Oh, it did. Almost. That's good. good. That's good there. We doubled on that one. Yeah, I did you dirty on that one. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's not too bad. A little one. Oh, yeah. Always bite better going up here. Yep. You know uh, every time. Oh, it is. She's better than I thought she was going to be. Cutter worm strike again. Yep, cutter worm again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. On the 
cutter worm. There we go. Not a bad little one. Not for a male. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, catching those bass, catching big ones, especially on the cutter worm, is one of my favorite things to do. They just eat it, guys. I wish I could tell you something other than that, but I hate that you might see this as a product push, but I, I really, I used a speed worm forever. I really did. I love the speed worm, and I still have speed worms, but I really never throw them anymore. I throw a cutter worm all the time. And, and honestly, I would say a cutter worm is probably taking the place of a stick worm for me in a lot of situations. Now, did I win with a stick worm, a four inch Ocho at Lake Cherokee? Absolutely, because the conditions call for ultra finesse, slow fall. And so that situation, I did turn back to the stick worm. But anytime I'm around cover, whether it's grass, uh, trees, laydowns, bushes, that cutter worm tends to shine. So there's two different ways that I fish a cutter worm that I want to talk to you about today. Both of them involve a Texas rig, but both of them involve different types of line. When I am reeling a cutter worm, or a speed worm for that matter, you can look at it from both different ways. When I'm reeling a, a ultra vibe or a cutter worm, I'm going to use braid. Now, I don't like braid that much, guys. I really don't like braid. But in the case of reeling that bait through the cover and you're reeling it over and under grass and around, you know, whether lily pad stems or whatever, a lot of times you're thinking you're having bites because you're, you're hitting something and you'll end up missing a lot of bass by using fluorocarbon in that situation, especially if you make a long cast. So I go to braid, but I go to a different size braid than what you might guess. I actually go to 20 pound braid. That's right, you heard that right, 20 pound braid. I know that's super small on a bait casting rod, but it cuts through the grass extremely well, it casts extremely well, and it's a tiny, tiny diameter. I think my bait gets even more action in the water with that smaller diameter line in cases when you see guys throwing 30, 50, or 30, 40, 50 pound braid. You know, I, I think I get more bites than they get. I really do. But the way I rig it is a little bit old school. Now, don't laugh at me. Try not to laugh at me here, but I, I use, and I, and Grant, I'm not sponsored by this hook and weight company, but this weight is that old school Florida weight. This is a tungsten Florida weight. I want to say bullet weights might make this. It's a 3 16th ounce size. And as you can see, all you have to do is pull your line tight. And most of you have probably seen a Florida weight, but I'll show you. And all you do is you screw it into the top of the worm like this. And that way you don't have to peg it or anything like that. One cool thing about this is when you hook a fish, this they, there's a slot built in on this cutter worm that actually will push the hook out and watch, watch what happens next. Your line, your bait will actually slide up the line with the weight still attached and it actually forces that worm up the line. So I have a less likely chance of missing them because my, my worm is balling up on my bait. I, I lose them hardly ever with it. I think it makes a humongous difference. And I do that with both my Magnum and smaller size cutter worm. And like I said, guys, you can do this on a, a speed worm, any of those swimming type worms. I just really, I'm still an old school guy. Like I like that type of weight. The hook I use, uh, Todd Castledine actually introduced me to it. It's a three aught owner, just offset worm hook. It's a really, really good hook. It's strong, especially for braid. The rod I use, I think, is absolutely critical for braid. Uh, this is actually my uh, soft plastic stick worm rod. So, like, if I'm throwing a weightless Ocho, weightless Cinco, I'm throwing this rod. It's a 7.2 medium heavy uh, lose uh, TP1 black. This is not an expensive rod. This is a, a middle of the road rod as far as retail goes. It's a very affordable rod. The thing I love love about this rod it has a lot of tip to it so one of my biggest complaints ever when throwing that that ultra vibe worm is when you go to set the hook on them if you're throwing too heavy a rod with braided line you have a tendency to pull the bait out of their mouth and that is a massive massive problem so you got to have a rod that has a little bit of give to the tip so when you load up on them you catch that bass and i promise you guys if you take that tip it doesn't have to be this loose rod i i think you'd have more success with it because i've already tested it and i know exactly which rod worked for the technique but if you find you a rod that has a good enough tip and a decent backbone you're going to find success by going that 20 pound braid 
I paired that up with a 7.5 to 1 reel. I just like high speed reels. In a couple of situations this week, I, I would hook a bass and they'd run at me so fast that if I was using a 6.8 to 1 or even a 5 to 1, which I would never do, but if I was using one that slow, I absolutely would have lost those bass. The other way I rig it, I still use the Florida weight because I just, I'm old school like that. I just like that weight. I don't want that peg on my line if I don't have to have it. I'll use that same Florida weight, that exact same hook. I'll drop down to 15 pound test fluorocarbon. Same rod, same reel. I know that's kind of oddly specific, but like guys, you can do with both. But in this situation, when I'm throwing the other, if you if you notice from one of the fish catches earlier, especially a couple of the bigger ones, I was using, uh, I think I was using 17. I'd upsize my line a little bit because we are at Choke Canyon and went around giant bass, you upsize your line. That's just a fact, guys. So I upsized my line slightly and I was able to catch those bass, but that's a very important thing. But when I'm fishing deeper and I want to drag it on the bottom, I want to like fish slow. I might be flipping around cover slightly, you know, just kind of fan casting like old school worming like my Uncle Bill does. That's when I'm going to fluorocarbon. When I'm so if you break it down really simply, when I'm casting and reeling, I'm using braid 20 pound. When I'm casting and dragging on the bottom and stuff like that, I'm going to 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon. Exact same rod and reel setup, so you can just switch spools out or maybe just switch reels out on your favorite rod and it'll get it done. Guys, this is an old school Texas rig technique in a new school way and I promise you, if you take a look at this and you try it out right now, you're gonna be shocked how many bass you're able to catch. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I really do appreciate all of your support. If you liked it, make sure you drop a like. And I guess if you didn't like it, I guess you could drop a dislike, but I don't know if you want to be that guy. Also, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. And, and don't forget to drop me your favorite worm. I love hearing y'all's feedback as far as colors of baits, styles of worms. I absolutely listen. I'm sorry I haven't been able to get to comments as fast as I typically do. We've been filming a lot, been running around a lot, trying to bring you the best content in the world. And I promise you, that's exactly our mission. I hope you've had a great day, guys, and I'll see you on the next video.